Hello, welcome back to the channel. Chris here. Today we're looking at the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope again, which I've been reviewing for Dwarf Lab. And uh, it comes with some filters, two of which are ND1 million, which is very dark indeed. And these can be used for solar imaging. Hopefully we can pop the sunglasses on the Dwarf 2 today with the filters and uh, catch some sunspots on the sun. Okay, so we're on the app, all connected to the Wi-Fi signal the Dwarf 2 produces. You can see that there's a box in the top left corner there, and that's showing you what's on the wide angle lens. And then this area here is covering what we can see on the telephoto. So that's really handy for finding the sun, because I can see it on the wide angle. So all I can do now is move the joystick and get that centered, and it should appear lovely in the middle of the telephoto there we go <laughs> how easy was that so now it's just a case of messing with the exposure and focus so if I get rid of that uh, wide angle it's already pretty well focused actually the exposure doesn't look bad but let me just play with that a little bit one sixtieth of a second. There's some clouds going in front. Oh, that's gone out of focus. There we are. I think we're not too far off clearing the clouds. So I'm just going to hang around and then once the clouds go away, we'll take some snaps of that and I'll, I'll show you them. There we go, the clouds are starting to dissipate now, so we can see the sunspots a little bit more clearly. We'll give it another second, and then as soon as it kind of clears that area of clouds, I'm going to just take some snapshots of that so we can have a look at them. Here we go, that's a nice clear disc now. Take some photos. I'm going to zoom in on that patch of sunspots there. and get the focus a bit better. I think that's pretty good. Take some snaps there. Right, let's go to the album and see what we've got there. <laughs> nice array of uh, images to look at. Let's have a look at that last one. Well, that was remarkably easy. Usually when you're trying to do solar imaging, you're fishing around for the sun for a while, trying to get it centered on the sensor. And because the Dwarf 2 use, utilizes its wide angle lens and shows you the picture of that in the corner, it's so easy to find the sun and then get it centered in the telephoto lens, which is pictured on the bigger part of the screen. That was nicely implemented, I thought, and the focus was nice and easy. I could see a nice row of sunspots. So very good so far for solar, really impressed with that, how easy that was. So what have I been up to apart from this spot of solar imaging? Well, I captured the Crab Nebula the other night, which is a supernova remnant. And uh, that's quite a small object, but I did pick it up as a nice oval area on a field of stars on 200 times five second exposures I took in total. So I'm experimenting with longer exposures now. And uh, to get more out of this, I need to get it onto the equatorial tripod at 52 degrees at my local latitude point the dwarf two towards the pole star and i've been watching with interest uh, as quiv the lazy geek uh, makes videos and uh, pioneers the way forward with how this is going really i'd say 
um, is the first person I've seen to use the equatorial mode and he popped a straw on the side uh, which I thought was a nice <laughs> MacGyver way of uh, aligning to the pole star. So we're all in contact with Dwarf Lab. Anyone who's borrowed one of these to review, we're all emailing back our thoughts about it, how it could be improved and stuff. And um, so standing on the shoulder of giants, as in AKA Quiv, um, I said, why, why don't we have like a, a find a finder shoe, a standard fix and finder shoe, and then you can put a red dot finder on it, maybe that side where the buttons aren't, and um, that would make it easier to align to the pole star. And they messaged back saying, well, we, we use the wide angled lens of the Dwarf 2 to actually help with finding the pole star. So from what I understand, if I understood it correctly, is they're actually plate solving with the wide angle lens to polar align, which makes it even more easy. So very much looking forward to doing some equatorial um, mode imaging with this because it will get rid of some of that field rotation, hopefully increase the decrease the tracking errors as well. I think that will enable me to go deeper and get better better pictures as well as adding the darks as well, the dark astro dark mode, dark frames to the, the images to get rid of the noise. I think that's going to really help. But further to that, I mean, with, with regards to feeding back to Dwarf Lab, um, I, my big problem with this at the moment is getting colour images out of Deep Sky Stacker. Deep Sky Stacker can't debayer the TIFF files of the Dwarf 2 and at the moment we've only got TIFF, TIFF files to play with with the Dwarf 2 in terms of raw files. What I'd like to see, and this is what I've asked uh, Dwarf Lab about, is if we could have FITS files which are a standard amongst professional astronomers as well as a lot of amateur astronomers for imaging and acquisition of uh, image data and it so happens that Deep Sky Stacker, which is a very popular free stacking software, can debayer the FITS files. Uh, so I converted one of my TIFFs from the Dwarf 2 using an online converter into a FITS, popped it into Deep Sky Stacker, opened up in colour. Before that, when I was just putting the raw file straight from the raw the Dwarf 2 into Deep Sky Stacker, I could only get grey 16-bit files and therefore my resulting images were monochrome. So if they can implement FITS files, I think that would be brilliant because Deep Sky Stacker is such a popular program for people starting out in imaging because it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay a penny for it and it enables you to stack all those images together that you capture nice and quickly to bring out the signal and reduce that noise before you process in something like, I use GIMP because that's free, but any other image manipulation program you like. So yeah, I really hope they can somehow implement FITS files as well as the TIFF files into the Dwarf 2. Also, I mentioned that with the histogram, one problem I was having is that when you press down on the curve, it creates a node that the curve pivots from. But I was accidentally placing more than one node when I didn't want to, because if you just take your finger off slightly and put it back on, it just creates another dot to pivot from. And I was getting a bit in a muddle with it. So I said, is it possible to have like a a button where you just press it and it just goes back one step so you can undo a change that you've done by accident and they, they wrote back and said actually if you click on a node and then drag it out of the uh, histogram then it will get rid of it and that's one way of going one step back so I thought that was really useful to know and sort of share with you guys because I was getting a bit frustrated with like accidentally pressing on the wrong part of the histogram um, stretch and placing a node where I didn't want it to be stretched and then I was like well I've got to reset it and start again but apparently not just drag that node out of the histogram and it goes back one step gets rid of that node fantastic um, last video I forgot to mention also that I've had no problems with Dew at all and it's because Dwarf Lab have a heating strip between the two lenses so even though it's the depths of winter here and it's very damp, I've had no real issue, issues uh, with dew at all. So that's really promising. And the rate of updates is incredible. I updated it, the software again last night and uh, yeah, there's new, there's new firmware, software and the app's been updated. So I'm looking forward to playing about with Quiven Dwarf Labs uh, um, 
collab on getting the uh, auto stretch. I think that would be really good. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing, oh yeah, they've added planets as well. They've added planets to the list. I don't think you'd get brilliant view of planets and the moon, but they're on the list now. I'm gonna think about what other objects we could add that are realistic. Because one thing I noticed was I had um, Stellarium open, checking the availability of the objects that are on the list of objects you could go to in the Dwarf 2. And there was only like a handful <laughs> that I could actually see high enough above the horizon to actually go to. I think we need to look at some more objects to be added for people at certain latitudes that can't access uh, some of the ones from the list at certain times of the year. But yeah, I'll, I'll get my thinking cap on for that and, and uh, feed that back to Dwarf Lab. Cool, uh, what else is there to share about it that I've learned? Yeah, I, I think that's it actually. I think I'm just gonna go out now, test it with the updated firmware and the updated app, see how we go in equatorial mode. All very exciting and uh, see what we can capture um, from here. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Big thank you to my channel members, Dan the Man and the Four Grapples. Please hit that like and subscribe and the bell to follow along. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video and we can see what else we can do with this.